Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to another installment of our Earth Novel Consciousness uh, Exploration. And today we have a lovely guest, our uh, Mr. Seth uh, Leif uh, Prusansky. And Seth's got a, got a big story. Um, but today we're just going to hone into his association with water because actually he, he has invited us to one of his uh, groups on Facebook which is called the, the Water uh, Consciousness Movement. And uh, uh, we, we thought it would be a nice opportunity to get together and have a chat with him and ask him some questions and obviously get some inspirations together and see what we can learn from each other. So welcome, Seth. Thank you, Martina. I really to, appreciate it. Cool. Fantastic. And you probably have met him already through the Laura Eisenhower show. He's been on the Andrew show before and everything. And um, we've also got Angelica today. I just want to mention her because she is, her profession is water photography. And we've done a bit of work together. We've done healing meditations and stuff like that. And I know there's other people who do work with, uh, with photography, with water. And so we're just going to bring it together. So all the questions, I'm just going to kick it off briefly. And then what we do say is we, we don't do hand raising and stuff. We just, you know, because we're not that big yet. So we're just going to, if an inspiration comes up and you guys have a question, then just chime in and just obviously be, uh, what's the word? Be nice. Respectful. Let's not be yeah, respectful. respectful. <laughs> I don't even know the word. Be respectful to others. Let them finish. Let's not make it too long. And let's use uh, Seth's uh, input. So let's do that. Um, my question to kick it off, very simple, yeah? Some would say uh, water is the most valuable uh, element of all the five. And my question to you, Seth, is what has actually led you to explore water, the consciousness of water, in, in more detail? Simply my own consciousness. You know, I would agree water is the most precious and most powerful element um, physical element, but beyond water is the actual biophysical energy of consciousness itself. That's maybe not as tangible or palpable and it's harder to, to give voice to or for somebody to put their finger on and feel it. But water is like next in line, right? This consciousness, the purity of our consciousness is something that when we are in alignment with it, just we explode we feel like we're not stuck in this body we're not stuck in all these belief systems we can begin to experience ourselves as we truly are you know these limitless bioenergetic beings that are animating a human form and water is that anomalous substance it's like between spirit and the physical world it has properties that mimic both really and the more you look at water, the more that a lot of scientists I know who've looked at water, my dear friend Veda Austin, who also does water crystallography, and Rupert Sheldrake, Gerald Pollock, a lot of scientists who dived really deep into the nature of water and consciousness and how it is interrelated, find that they are perplexed in the best way possible because just when you think you start to understand water, you get taken for a loop. So for me, it was a thing like I came into water just by going through really difficult times in my life and feeling the soothing, just loving aspect of water and how healing it was. But I also realized that the more I tapped into the purity of my own consciousness, the more water helped me sustain that state of internal being so this is i could go on forever about this so just to keep it really short that's what it came from have we lost Sorry. martina no she's there okay i've lost her. <laughs> i think somebody's looking for his passport whoa okay now i got all of that uh, and you know it's the one thing that stood out for me is the the uh the programmable side of water right yeah so let's talk a little bit about that 
because uh, you know we we lo lots of us is act are actually uh, obviously very familiar with the work of Andrew Bartis, and we always talk a lot about water from the from the uh, program perspective. Uh, you know, the bodies being 70, 80% water and the connection to nature through that and the belief system and everything that is being imprinted on us so easily through the consciousness of water. Yeah. So what is your findings in terms of, you know, how do you work in deprogramming yourself uh, and the people you work with, with regards to water? Is there any, are there any particular tools or specific techniques that you're using? There's so many. And just because of the nature of this talk, I'm going to refer to my friend Veda, Veda Austin, a lot because I, she should have been here. And like now I'm realizing that we should have had her on because her body of work and research in all facets of water and how it relates to human welfare and planetary welfare is phenomenal but you know understanding it from the perspective that she does we when you view water as not something that you're separate from in your body or in the planet around you or even in space like you know water is everywhere you start to cultivate a different relationship with yourself and with water and this is a relationship that the more you cultivate it, the closer you get with it, the more profound it becomes, the more your own fluid-like emotions and feelings start to come out and you take it seriously. You, you love it. So the main thing that I would say with people is developing a conscious connection with the water they drink with the water in their bodies and the water around them. Just realizing that you can begin to have a relationship with it, no matter where it is, you know, no matter where it is, whether it, again, it's around you or you're drinking it or it's a, the ocean or a lake or a stream by just looking at water, feeling it, listening to it, communing with it, but doing it heart filled, you know, with presence and really trying to feel like what, is happening here you start to recognize that there is a communication that is going on between the water in the world around you and the water inside of your own body and often the communication is very much synchronized and yeah. so so a good way of, of looking at that and thanks for that because we look at um for instance when we work with with the blood when we work with the lymphatic system, when we work with uh, the fluid sac around the heart, that's all part of that water that we are actually talking about manifested physically. And then as we start deprogramming um, all the limitations and the conclusions and the points of views from the blood by doing the blood meditation, the heart meditation, all of that, we are actually literally working with the deprogramming of that water. That's the taking it away, taking away all the limitations. Equally so, we can obviously program our bodies by um, one, of, one of the things I remember Andrew was always talking about um, uh, freezing water, you know, working with water, uh, using the contract revocations, uh, reading and, 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 and um, recording the revocations and then just playing them to the water freeze the water into ice cubes and then using them, you know, that, that's, I love those little tools, you know, that we can use uh, to do all that. It's, it's truly like, cause you know, there is, there's a million different things that can be done, but what I found is it truly comes down to simplify it is building and creating and sustaining a conscious relationship with it. Because Look at, you know, by weight, we're 70, 60 to 70% water, some not even, depending on how dehydrated they are. All the systems of our body are made up of water. Our brain is mostly water. We literally are water beings. You know, the cells of our body are composed of or surrounded by 99% water. We are water. And that water, it's not just any water either. It's highly structured highly informed, organized water that 
allows all the electrical, the bioelectrical conductivity of our human consciousness to be able to work through all these systems. So if we're holding on to memories of the past or pain or trauma, then we're holding those programs or that conditioning in the water systems of our body. Hence why I say just creating a heartfelt connection with water, loving it helps restructure those, you know, the water that's in your body and those old programs start to go away because they don't have a place to live, but it takes an individual really loving themselves. Hence the need. It's so important to love yourself and love water. Yeah. Okay. So, so what you're saying is by doing that uh, internal work, by doing the self healing, by doing the, the sovereignty work and everything, you are literally, as you're doing that work, you are working with water, you're working with your body, you're working with water and just really having that intention um, and that perspective as you do all that work. Yes, it's yeah. like, you know, not to take up too much time here, but we have all been kind of devalued and we devalue ourselves as a result of it. We've all forgotten how powerful we each truly are to affect change within and around us. And realizing that is the first step. Taking responsibility for it is the second, but the way we take responsibility for it is by simply, you know, I always tell people smile. It's a great acronym. It means for smile is start my internal love engine. If you're smiling inwardly, if you're doing like what you're talking about, heart brain coherence while you're smiling and you're feeling that and you just keep doing that. You know, the whole world could be falling around, but you're smiling, you're in love, not because you're trying to bypass any of this, just the opposite. You are choosing to take the high road. You're choosing to exist at a higher frequency than one that is consumed by fear. Because we all know what happens when we become fearful or hurt or traumatized by things that happen in the world, our body takes the hit. It literally takes the hit by memorizing the pain and trauma and the things that happen. And it stays there until we finally realize that we're powerful enough to rise above it. Yeah. So it's, it's very much that the work of uh, Masaru Emoto, you know, and I understand that the lady you mentioned earlier on, Veda Austin or something, you were saying that uh, she actually has taken that work, Emoto's work, to the next level. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. So Emoto, God bless him, he's amazing. He like, inspired us all. Interestingly, his work was microscopic. Veda's work is macroscopic. You don't need a microscope to even look at it and see. And she's done these tests with water crystallography. She, she doesn't like calling them tests or experiments or anything like that. It's just a communication. It's a relationship with water. She's done it so many times with the re such repeatable results that continuously keep happening that she's gotten the attention of Rupert Sheldrake, Gerald Pollack, big name scientists who they're scratching their heads. They're like, I don't, they don't know what's happening, but, and it's almost scientific. It's like on the verge, but it could be, and they know it. And so they're behind her. But what it really speaks to above and beyond our observational, you know, on looking or perspectives of it, it speaks to what happens when an individual intentionally cultivates this connection to water, like you know, I was saying. And yeah. Her work reflects that beautifully, like it, so much to the degree that she's having full blown communication with water where it's communicating back to her. <laughs> it, it's okay. mind yeah. Beautiful. Um, I'd like to bring in uh, Angelica there for a moment because I do remember having conversations with you, Angelica, when you do uh, your photography, you always, you, you, you also say to me that you disappear in that conversation with the water, right? Yeah. I, I fi find myself naturally drawn to water for a long, long time already. And, and I, I still think it's, it's magic that is happening when I'm close to water. Uh, for me, it is discovering almost a, 
a hidden language. So I study the water um, with my camera uh, in a meditative way. And I know that there's something there, that there's a story there or a message, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So I'm, I'm just guided by the water and by my fluid connection to it. Uh, and it's, it's one motion and I'm taking one picture after the other and I'm inspired to use different chapter speeds or uh, lenses. And my very first picture that I take of this process to then the last one is very, very different. And you wouldn't know that this was the same place or the same situation. It's, it's interesting because I'm very happy with the last image and I feel as I have understood the water, but I don't really know what I understood and what I've taken away with it. But I know I've got that frequency and I've got that connection with it. Uh, and my subconsciousness probably totally got it, but I'm not aware of what I've got, if that makes sense. Yeah? And that keeps me going and exploring and yeah, loving what I, what I do, yeah? But also I, I like to uh, encourage other people to look and discover, uh, you know, the stories that they find. And what I find very interesting is when I have my exhibitions that uh, people are drawn to different images and they are, they are equally sort of connected with totally different images. So I'm kind of, okay, what does that image actually tell to them? What kind of connections have they found uh, that, that I, I don't see, you know, that I haven't understood or I have understood in a similar way. Uh, so, but to translate that into a language that is kind of verbally ex expressed in, in English or French or <laughs> whatever language, uh, that is hard. But, you know, water has this kind of magnificent, um, you know, multilingual language that we can all understand and we're all connected through it, yeah. Joseph, you're loving that. I'm when loving it. I can like, I can feel all the like, goosebumps. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> I want to see it. I'm like, let's, look. you know, I, yeah. It's one of those things because we're talking about unifying elements, you know, and when you're so connected to what you are inside and somebody else is connected to the same thing inside of them and we come together like this and we create and we, the potential is infinite. And yeah, I get excited. <laughs> So, so uh, Angelica is using also uh, lots of your exhibitions uh, are in hospitals, uh, in environments where people seeking healing. Um, so do you want to say a little bit about that? So you're really going into that water yeah. healing consciousness. It, it, is there a website, Angelica? Is there a way to see your work too? Uh, you, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, my website is non-existent at the moment because I'm, I'm doing a new one. But what is it on Instagram? Sorry, I just want to make yeah, sure. If you, if you uh, type in Angelica with a K underscore Spranger underscore art underscore photo, um, there you can find me. Um, Martina, you'll, yeah, probably, you'll, you'll link it underneath here probably, huh? Yeah, I just write it in the chat, always but we can always, we can always, you know, uh, link each other. I think I, I got the Angelica Sprung art photo, yeah. Got it, got it right here, yes. So Thank you. What, what was interesting is when I got in, I did a degree in art for public space, so that you just know, you know, my, my background. And um, I think, you know, art is such an, uh, an important and very powerful role in our society to raise awareness, you know, for all sorts of different things. Um, I was very sort of um, really touched that I was in, in, invited by the art director of St. George's Hospital. They have a gallery space um, 
to take over that space and create just what I wanted to. So I have the total freedom to do whatever. And that's fantastic. Um, so I thought, you know, it's, it's a very fragile, sensitive space there where doctors, nurses, patients, uh, all people sort of struggling with different kind of stress situations. And what they all need is, is calming, mm. finding that breath, slowing the blood pressures down, slowing the internal fluids down, the, the bloods, the kind of waters in their bodies and, and find a little peace. And I thought, okay, how, how can I reach them? What can I create to, to really sort of give them what they need? And it was really wonderful to curate an exhibition for that purpose and not for, you know, showing off the arty side. But that's another story and you have to do that as an artist, of course. But this was really sort of to give them what they need. There's actually a YouTube video of, of that uh, uh, exhibition. So what I created was an installation of fabrics that I draped in kind of soft water wavy kind of forms. And onto these drapes, so they were about uh, two and a half meters wide by two meters high. Uh, because it was a, in a big space where people sat further away. So you need something uh, in a bigger scale that you can see something further away. And then onto these drapes to bring this softness into this kind of rather sterile environment, I projected my uh, visual diary of, of, of different places, uh, short videos and stills from water taken in, in different areas that inspire me to go back to these places. That was actually my first time where I thought actually it's worth, you know, sharing this little diary that I have got with people and they might get something out of it. So it was a loop of um, this collection uh, that lasts for about 12 minutes. So a quick coffee break, a quick sandwich, a short meditation, uh, all you might need to, to feel a bit better afterwards. And I must say, uh, the, the feedback that I had, and you know, I was there a lot and I sat on a table and just let people get on with it. They didn't know I was there and sometimes I got in contact with them. But if you see, for example, uh, a, a, a couple with their fairly newborn twins sitting in front of there, her nursing, you know, the baby, he looking at the installation, totally at peace. Or, you know, a gentleman, he talked to me actually, and he said, thank you so much. That was just what I needed. You know, if you get this kind of feedback, uh, then, then you know, you know you've, you've created something that makes people happy and they, they can almost dive into that place where I have been. And I can give them that kind of feeling, that language that I have captured in my work and it obviously says something to them and that I find fascinating. Yeah. I, I really love that. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Now I've, I've seen a couple of those now uh, and I'm almost, uh, you know, always honored and, you know, privileged to be there with you, you. And, and do stuff. So what have we got? Does that, any of that bring up any questions for you guys? What, what have you got? Anything with regards to water that you would like to ask or to bring through? Well, just going beyond what Angelica was just saying there, which is lovely. Thank you for sharing that. I came across a student, uh, an art student in some gardens I was walking and they had the, they were, they'd set up their pad over a running stream, which runs through the gardens with a cork, over the, the bobbing up and down as the waters flowed attached to a pencil mm -hmm. which was then drawing across a page recording I suppose you could just call it water art that's I mean what <laughs> water drawing I don't know what else you'd call it but it mm. was quite fascinating to watch and I'd never seen or heard of anybody doing anything like that before 
And of course, what it drew was actually what looked like water anyway. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was undulating. And I wondered if anybody else had, had ever seen any of those sort of experiments with drawing and water in that form. No, yeah. I have no. never seen that, no. Yeah, it was an interesting mm. one. Mm. It's interesting when you you get into that, I think it's the same thing with the drawing that you were just talking about, Laura, when you get into capturing this energy, because, you know, with water, you, you can, you know, experience or pick up so much information. And of course, it's, it's the energy in it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, that was also another interesting, you know, process of watching the energy or feeling the energy and translating that into a different kind of language through that drawing yeah mm. uh, which is yeah, like a water language yeah yes yeah I, I just, do to, sorry no go ahead martina yeah, okay. You've got, you've got, you've okay, got. just to go on, I, I'm Mary, I'm re I realise my name is not up on the screen there and I come from Ireland and you're very welcome Seth and um, here in Ireland there's no shortage of water, mm. <laughs> we have mm. lots, <laughs> lots of water, so a few questions. I was born on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. So. Oh, were you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, just a few things that were running through my mind as you were talking about the consciousness of water and two things I've been around a lot of water in the last few days because I have been to the cliffs and the, the, the water there is very powerful it's very strong it definitely has a very strong message and there's it feels like there's an awful lot of cleansing and, you, you know, I am aware that when I'm around a place like that, I do pick up the energy and the memory from the land. And I think that it's the water in me picking it up from the water in the place. And, and I just find that connection fascinating. And, and if you go into the water, what that feels like and how the water sort of just washes all the memory away, you know, and the, and the traumas away, and it soothes and dissolves, you know, it, it transforms us so beautifully and so softly and so flowingly. And we do have a lot of, there's a lot of streams around where I live as well. And sometimes I love to go and just stand and listen. I'm not sure what it's saying, but just the noise of the water as it just flows through the little crevices and the rocks and- You can hear music. It's, yeah, you, it's, can hear, you can hear actual yeah. music in the water. You can actually, it's yeah. music and it's, it's just, it's fabulous. But the other thing I was wondering was, and I know I'm, I'm rushing through a few questions because I don't want to take up all the time asking you the questions. I'm sure everybody has questions. I'm wondering, and I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm wondering of itself, does water have a consciousness? Because I'm very aware of how water is affected by the consciousness of us and of the land and of the environment. It's always picking up and reflecting the consciousness of the environment and what's around us. But of itself, I wonder, does it have a consciousness of itself? I, I think it does. I think it does, Mary. You know, it's, it's yeah. one of the original ancestors as well, isn't it? So it's an ancestral energy as well. It, oh yes, it's speaking and, and of the, the ancestors, yes. That's right, and, and the thing with water is it's omnipresence. That's what makes it so powerful, is that it is everywhere and it's, and, it, and, it's, and it's in many different forms as well. So, you know, anybody who's worked with water at all knows how highly programmable it is. And whenever we're programming a lot of different things and substances, it's the water content. So our body is made up of water, there's water in the air, and then when you're around those places, that water has an effect on your waters. And likewise, you know, there's a language yeah. going on. So I know that there, there is certain consciousness that do in, inhabit water. But I think water does have its own unique yeah. frequency, almost like yes. the collective consciousness concept, really. So, yes, I, I just think it's interesting. It's interesting to, to sort of ponder on that, because I wonder what the exchange is then between our consciousness and our memory with, with the water's memory, irrespective of what is picking up in its environment. Do you know what I'm saying? That, that you know, just what it's giving us in itself. Absolutely. And, and you know, it, it, it probably has something to do with memory as well, storage of memory. It's probably the memory of all, you know, when you think about how the water's traveled around and around, this whole world is engulfed in water, inner and outer. Yes. You know, and, and all that memory must be stored. And also imagine water sometimes, you know, as a, 
it creates energy and motion, doesn't it? So as it flows through the rocks, it creates unique frequencies. And I, I like to imagine this kind of exchange of memory going on through the rocks, yes. the water, and, and, and all of the other elements. But water Absolutely. seems to be the most omnipresent of all of them, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose it's the one that we, we pay more attention to, isn't it, for some reason? Because of the fact that we're all connected to it and we have such a water presence in ourselves. I remember in different uh, modalities that I was training in, you know, the water in our cells is related to the veins and the arteries and the whole lymphatic and, and blood system, so the whole drainage system. So, you know, when you think about that and you think about what that does to, for us in the body and what it does then on the planet with the carrying of all those memories from the ancestors and the washing of it and the cleansing and all of that, it's just a fascinating element really to work with. And there's a negative side to that as well, you know, there's all sorts of energy that it can pick up as well. I, I won't consume any sort of water that hasn't had some form of prayer process over it. You yeah. know, especially, I mean, it's not, so, it's not so much the case where you live, but where we live, Mary, a lot of the water comes from the, um, comes from the system of the drains. So, you know, all of the water that comes off of the roads is runs into the rivers. And, and all of the water that, that we use in our toilets and all of the chemicals and things that people use in their homes gets recycled and cleaned. And then that water gets pumped back into the system. It and does, it's a very, yeah. very dirty situation to be in, isn't it? You know? Well, you know, I was thinking about that the other day, actually, about, about the way water is recycled. You know, the water that we use in, in, our, in our sewage system even is recycled and cleansed and comes back into the taps. And, and it's done by chemical, really, intervention, isn't it? Yes, a, a small amount of filtration. I, I, really, <laughs> I really have nothing to say about it other than I was thinking about it. I was just wondering how clean actually is it after all of that, energetically? Not, not how, very how at all. Clean? No. Not physically either, because I, I, have, I have a water filter that I use to clean my water now. And before that, um, some years ago, we were, we were um, distilling our water before we knew that the right filtration was available. And um, at, at the bottom of the water, once you'd finished, was just, just all you can describe is just white powder, like a mm. white powder. It's just chemicals. You could smell all different yes. manner of, just like someone crushed up a load of tablets and put it into your water. Yes. No? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. smell the chemicals off the water sometimes. Oh, yes. very much so. Yes. So I've got a question here from the bigger picture, yeah, with regards to recycling. Because recycling, you know, the water that we are that our bodies are containing, that we're drinking now and all of it, that is ancient, 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 ancient. Mm. Because it, it's like water is continuously recycled, yes. right? Purified and cleansed and programmed again, you know? So it's, when, when you start looking from a recycling perspective, from a, bigger, from a bigger perspective, it's like, oh my God, I'm still, you know, uh, having water in my body now that I probably had, I don't know, 15 million years ago, you know, yes. <laughs> and, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's a very, very fascinating thing. Because sometimes I also think if I, you know, obviously, you know, well, I like to travel and I travel quite a bit. And if you're in different places and you, you drink the water there, you, you swim in the water there, so you, you physically connect with a water source in a different place. So then I'm, I'm sometimes wondering, okay, what information have I got now? You know, what, what have I learned? What have I connected with just now? What, what do I know that I don't even am aware of, of, of knowing? Yeah, that's the fascinating thing. And, and the water that I got, you know, uh, I don't know that I that I drank in Vanuatu in, in in you know in the middle of nowhere. Where has that water been before? And yes. what story? How are we all connected through that? Yeah, that's yes. that, that's a really fascinating point for me too. Yeah, I I think this this is the thing that that oneness for me it's all about the flow and the surrender surrender is 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 that energy that is connected to water pretty much it's like the tongue and the taste is connected because it's in nature it's water and surrender is that element associated with water um and that really acknowledging that we are all one yeah. yes absolutely, absolutely. 
Can I say something, Martina? Yeah. Hi, 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 everyone. Hi, Fred. Welcome um, uh, to Martina's or to the Earth Nouveau. Um, what I wanted to say is obviously I do different modalities, and one of the modalities I do and cherish is Ho'oponopono. And in that, which is what uh, connects to Martina's answer, is that you know what Hawaii means. Hawaii means Ha means the breath of the divine. And why means the water of the divine. So it's the divine love with regards to the water. And there is a tool which I can tell you because it's been, a, I mean, um, it's on the website everywhere, web, other websites everywhere. So what you do is when you have tap water, you pour it in a blue bottle. I call it, we call it blue solar water. And you pour it in the bottle and you put it under the light. Obviously sunlight is good, but any light. And you leave it up to 60 minutes or longer. And then that water then gets solarized. So what you're doing is you're drinking divine love. You're drinking divinity. You, you are in the flow. And I wash with it. I cook with it. I drink it. I Whatever it is. And also the other thing which was Martina said, that, you know, the lymph system you mentioned, or Mary, you mentioned yes. it as well. Mm -hmm. So obviously, guys, you know, that I do my alchemical stuff as well. And what I have realized that, you know, like sometimes you have the lymph system, and let's say your inner ties can get a bit more fat in them, right? Some, mm. you know, and I had some stuck energy there, some stuck things with the lymph system, and be working on that with my massage therapist. And actually, it went down, it starts to shrink. Because like what Seth said, and I agree with him, that we keep memories in those cells. And that water, if you will, um, jellyfied, I don't know how to <laughs> say that uh, in, 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 you know, in, in a proper uh, word, but I'm thinking like jellyfied, it becomes really hard. So meaning memories, abuse, anger, whatever, it is stuck in there. So in order to release that, we have to release what's going on within us because when we release that, we become the present moment and our bodies will shape and change and to, to that, you know, I am present love, which is what we're talking about with Andrew, the divine love that we are. Yes. So when Martina spoke about that immediately, that's what came up in me. So I straight away, okay, I did the clearing in me because that's what I do. And I thought, wow, that's great. Because then you can, you know, and my, my massage therapist who was here yesterday and he said to me, Andrea, something happened. It's good because we always measure it. And she was like, oh, it's totally different. So it's like from one minute to another, it can totally change. Yeah. And space can open up. Like something happened to me a few days ago. And that space, like I loved it when, when Seth said the, at the beginning, what happened is, everything became irrelevant, like people, objects. And I felt freedom that I have never felt before, a bit emotional, but it was like, wow. And that moment, it for me was a breakthrough moment. I'm like, everything became irrelevant. Yeah, mm, and that's beautiful. It came, fr came from an energy that because I'm doing my quantum jumps, you know, I'm doing Andrew's things, you know, guys, I do all that, but the, the, the energy that I have received and was willing to receive came to my life, and I'm, I'm so grateful for it. It's obviously the divine inspiration, but I thought, wow, and I was so proud of myself, you know? I was like, wow, you are doing your job. Come on, <laughs> let's do more of it, you know? <laughs> But that is the limb system, that is the water, the, the divinity, the, the water is everywhere. So yeah, like I, yeah. I saw, I, I just went on Insta and I saw Angelica's, um, you know, the, the, the things and it's, 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 it's incredible. You know, I'm not as good a photographer probably as you are, but I'm, I like to take pictures of water when I go by the beach. And you can hear the sea, when the sea comes out and hits the rock, it just speaks to your heart. It's incredible. Mm. Oh, beautiful yeah so no, i think no, you, you, you've just probably answered uh, i just want to read that one question we've got a question here from louis saying uh, abraham says get into the, vo the vortex um and then anything so with conscious direction can we change effect the stru structure of water through our intention and consciousness yes we can 
yes, we can through the self healing, you know, through everything what you, what you've just said and what we've said before. And then obviously this is where Seth comes in: heart, brain, water, coherence. Right? Yes. This is your big thing. It's all about the heart. It's all about you know stepping into that divine uh, potent. Yeah, this is the thing. It's it's not just lovey dovey. It's actually really acknowledging that that heart space connection, that brain heart space gut connection, the whole connection, is an expression of your divinity. It's an expression of your potency at the same time. And this is why it is so important uh, from an empowerment perspective to really acknowledge that you have that you are that potent to change right that yeah. even I just say- just looking around the world from a common sense oriented perspective you can put the pieces together so that it makes sense so what i mean like when you look at the earth you look at all the systems of the planet around you see that they're all working together they're all connected you know somebody said is asked is does water have consciousness you know and it depends on how you look at that like there's no right or wrong answer to any of it but we know that we have consciousness Mm -hmm. but when we aren't in alignment with these interconnected systems that are all throughout our body then it makes it harder for us to realize that the same energy that connects all the systems in our body is the same thing that's functioning in the natural world around us but the more connected we become to this field that unifies all these systems in our body and they start getting incoherence, they start working together, then we're able to perceive this interconnectedness through everything in the world around us. And that's why I always say heart brain coherence is the gateway to be able to perceive deeper and deeper levels of this coherent possibility because getting your heart and brain in sync is one thing, but getting all the water in your body is what carries the information and signals to all the other organs of your body. And when your entire body is working in sync with whatever this energy is that's causing the heart to beat, it's causing thoughts to arise in our mind, whatever that is, it's not ours. Like it's happening to us. It's happening for us. And it's something that if we're living in the past, we're living in a state of stress, we're not that aware of it. But if we live in a state of openness and start being like, well, I know there's something else there. I'm not the one beating my heart. Something is causing all this to happen. And you take what intelligence you have, what little bit of intelligence you have, and start aligning it with the innate intelligence of our own bodies. Then we become more aware of this greater intelligence that is empowering our existence, that allows all the systems of nature, both on the earth, in the solar system, in the galaxy, beyond. We literally start to recognize ourselves as truly conscious of all of it. And it's not theory, it's not philosophy. Even though we're talking about all this stuff, we're giving voice to it by using language. It is an actual experience that every single human being is capable of aligning themselves with by getting into coherence. So again, coherence in my experience and many others that I've worked with, it's the gateway to be able to perceive deeper and deeper levels of this unified perspective. Yeah, thanks, uh, Seth. And, and, And that brings us back to the potency of our DNA skin suits, isn't it? And this is why, you know, our skin suits, our bodies are so highly um, precious and traded. Uh, you know, we are being yeah. that farm, obviously. And, and somebody, Lana was just saying there, it's uh, by acknowledging all of that, uh, she's saying that uh, she heard from, from, yes, and we heard that of the pure water from our world got actually stolen, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, by and and and, and uh, transport it to, to other worlds because it has that capacity of storing all that, that information. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember Martina, for example, I had a bowel session with Martina, and you know when mm-hmm. you touch the body, Martina, 
for me personally, I don't know how everybody else is, but for me, it feels like a wave, you know, the water wave. Mm, so when, the, yeah. you know, when, when you touch me, and suddenly, ah, and it's like a wave of water is going through my body. That's what I've experienced with, with the Bowen session. Personally. Yeah. I, I don't know, yeah. maybe your clients say different things, but for me. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Good. Mm. Any, any, any other questions there, lovelies? Uh, hi, can I share, uh, share uh, something about water? Hi, please. everyone. Yes, please do. I was going to ask you because you were talking about the fourth phase yes. of water. What, okay. what is that all about? Okay. Um, at the moment, um, I'm doing my practice to, to become a, a craniosacral therapist. And I'm doing also my anatomy uh, course. And this weekend, what is amazing is at this present moment, uh, the um, symbiosis for me, uh, everything is about water. And the therapy I use, which is cranial, is all about the, the fluids in the, in the, wa in the water. I w I, I've been reading this uh, very interesting book, The Four Phase of Water, who uh, you do in cranial, they suggested for you to read. And the correlation is case so amazing because what he say is uh, the cells how uh, how they teach us well how how i experience the the learning about the cells is the cells are water and also we are uh, three uh, three layers and all is fluid membrane and of course water and in this book what they what they talking about is the infrared water how the infrared uh, water can alter it and the uh, electric potential of the cell. And it's all, and then it's all the same. It's so about so below. It's all the same, you know? It's uh, the same expression what um, uh, Bart is talking about. about uh, uh, now I'm completely in a brainstorm and I have very difficulties to express myself because I've been in these last days doing my homework, reading this book, making connections, and now I have all my notes all around. But what I have to say, and also, also, sorry about it, also uh, for me the experience in the dreaming world, um, in the dreaming world is like a fluid. Because one, once I realize, when I want to, uh, when I think I'm flying, when I was flying, I didn't do like a bird to flying. I was using like a swimming. And I start to realize, and also, when I meditate, sometimes I can feel the plasma because it's like a, like a density, fluid. Uh, it's very difficult for me to express in words, okay? That is also what I, I paint. But what I want to say, yes, the water uh, uh, conscience and the connections and the re resonance, that is what I'm learning in, in cranial. Uh, when you have a patient, uh, a person on the table, many times I think it's the person. I, I feel the movement, but 3D movement. And no, it's me. It's the resonance of my body on them. O sea, the water also will resonate with the water. I cannot... Uh, uh, sorry, my expression is... I'm a very tumultuous brainstorm at the moment. But I leave it there, you know? Okay. Uh, also, the last thing I want to say, what I wrote that I really, I really like when I was reading this book and making the connections with cranial and the fluid and water. Uh, when I'm doing cranial, what I, what I sense is I introducing a charge of electricity. I, I sense that charges and contortions that vibrate to make an ignition in the fluid of the waters of that person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Petruska. There was a lot of information in that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. But, and it's, it's, it's lovely to, to get your, um, I like the connection, like also Andrea made it early on by actually touching the body, by working with the body, by doing the cranial, by doing the bone, any type of massages. Where we where we getting an experience of that connection, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
see, and actually what happens is because, let's say, I'm an alchemist, I do it, Martin, I do it, I do it, Mary, something else, so, but because of our energy, our potency, our mutual state of being, I am love, we actually alchemize that water in the person. Do you know what I mean? So it's not going to be recycled crap, but it's going to be, it's going to flush out the person, for example. Uh, more yeah. than alkanize, more than alkanize, I think what you do it is fluidity. Yes, yes. you yes. make an ignition, it starts to fluid, you don't do nothing, it's their own body, it's stabilized, and just yes, with the fluidity. Yes, it's like when you see the water, when the water is running or when it's uh, uh, there, it's the same in the body. It's yeah, fluid. It's a, a co-creation. It, it's like automated you know oneness that we're, we're, we're stepping into as we are connecting with that intention I've got something to chime in with yes Tina. so speaking of alchemy and I do really love that book the fourth stage of water it's amazing it talks about the splitting the electrons how it relates all of that which kind of brings up the fact of what we are drinking so you know, the alkaline water, the distilled water, our regular water, the, the tap water. I'm wondering, you know, the effects that maybe we can discuss with that. Maybe Seth's input, because I think he actually has a, a water company. So, Seth, what is your view of distilled water? And, and, you know, on my point, it's like alkaline water is helpful right? But from what I've studied, it's not really that good to do before bed because it can energize us so much that it interferes with our dream world. So have you heard of things like that? And what is your view of drinking those types of water? So great question. And there's many different ways to answer it from my perspective, but different people and different bodies are going to have different needs as far as alkalinity, as far as minerals, based upon whatever they're dealing with, whatever kind of health condition they have going on. So what works for one might not work for another. Now, it is very difficult to get truly healthy, electrolyte structured water that is from nature. It's really almost impossible to get from most people unless they live next to an ancient bedrock spring where the water has been tested just so thoroughly showing the complete absence of all human contaminants. So that's hard to find for most people. So then it's like, well, what do we do? We got to purify the water for one, but even more than that, okay. However, purification, it messes with the ions, it changes it and all that. So it calls into question a deeper fundamental perspective that we have the opportunity to embody, which is when you look around, we realize that we are constantly being bombarded by information, by influence, by conditioning, by thoughts. Everything is affecting us from the outside in that we, for the most part, as individuals, have forgotten our ability to affect the world, right? So we're always being affected by the world, but how much are we affecting the actual world because highly structured water okay even though our the systems of our body are made up of mostly water it's not just any water it is a highly organized literal actual structure to water that enables the natural the innate intelligence the bioelectricity of our body to be able to be carried throughout all these systems of our body but when we're stressed out or we don't feel good or we're in a negative thinking and feeling loop, then we start to break down the structures, the integrity of these structures within our body. And it prevents the natural bioelectricity that we all have pulsing through us from being able to be as effective as it spreads throughout and even around our body. So the question becomes then like, okay, for forever we've been used to perceiving everything from the outside in to the degree that all of these glands in our body have become quite dormant or inactivated from a perceptual standpoint so then it's like okay the more you choose to get in tune with 
this coherent energy of your body, the more you can begin to start activating all of these dormant energy centers that are in and even around the body, like our glands. Okay, I hear a lot of people talking about the pineal gland and how calcium in the water calcifies it or chlorine calcifies it or whatever. And this is true to an extent. It absolutely, the toxins and everything in the world is affecting our body, but we're also not using these aspects of our body to the degree that we could. And so by choosing to get into an internal uplifted, elevated state, learn to sustain it and just keep sustaining it and make that your new default state of being, meaning that you're breathing rhythmically, you're smiling, you're choosing to rise above all the things that seem like they're oppressing us. And in doing that, you can then start doing internal work where you activate your own dormant energy centers. You literally can activate all these glands so that they wake up and start literally linking up with the coherent field of the heart. And then everything starts working together. Then you start thinking and feeling at a level that you weren't used to before. And from that place, you like it seems like magic. The right people come to you. The right solutions for your health just come to you. You figure out what water or what food or whatever is going to be best for you at that point in time because you're no longer a person separate from your source and just stuck in your head thinking thoughts. You are a unified being that is in alignment with all of these natural systems of your body. And your body itself is in alignment with the natural systems of the earth and the cosmos. And that's a very different state of being than most of humanity who is enslaved by their own fear of all the things they perceive around them. So I, that was a lie. I hope I answered what you're saying that my thing is I'm encouraging people to really get in tune with this energy that they are, make a habit out of it, and then seek external solutions from that internal place of connection. Because the things that come to you externally from this empowered internal place are going to be very different than, oh my God, I'm afraid of this tap water. I'm afraid of this. I'm going to try to do this. When you act and do things out of desperation, in many ways, you're going to keep attracting things that reinforce that level of desperation or, you know, destitute or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, but I do have one question about distilled water. Could you just describe it in your terms? And I do also, I, something hit me for a tool for people that are, you know, maybe in those places of not really knowing and how to empower that water absorption is Andrew's salt. Because salt is a catalyst for water absorption. And he, a lot of his homework for people is to get that bag of salt and to put it on our tailbones. And it just came to me as you were talking, it like blends all of this stuff together for us, these tools and, and ways to um, energize and get into that harmon 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 blah, place. Mm -hmm. But yeah, could you describe distilled water for us? So when I travel, I bring a distiller with me. Now, it's nothing like drinking water that you know, and I'm, you know, like, I'm not telling people to go out in the woods and just start drinking water. Do not do that. If you're going to drink water from a natural spring, make sure that you know that it's naturally pure and that it isn't filled with the contaminants or that there isn't things that could seep into the earth and ultimately infiltrate it. So distilling is great for purifying water, making it, you know, taking the toxins out of it, but it has no salts and it. it has nothing in it really. It's, and it's acidic. It's kind of like roughly about 5.5 pH. So it's a little bit acidic, which can be kind of harsh for some people. I like neutral water. So what I'll do is when I'm traveling and I don't have access to these natural springs, you know, one specifically around me, then I will distill the water add a little bit of Celtic sea salt, which I happen to like more than the other salts, just for a bunch of my own reasons. 
add a little bit of it to that. You can stir it to kind of get that vortex, that circular feel going in it. But even more than that, I will literally take it and put it up to my heart and I will cradle it or hold it or be close to it and send love into it. Let the field of my body acclimate let it permeate the water before I actually drink it and make it almost like a sacred rite, you know, something, a practice. It's an, just as we do yoga or meditation or anything else. It's serious. We're taking something that is external and putting it into our body. So it's so important to have gratitude and appreciation and to love water of all the other elements, you know, next to food and everything. When you do that to water, Oh my God, it changes it. And it changes the way your body picks up on it. So. <laughs> okay, guys, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Let me just, one thing, uh, Daitina was saying that you've got a, a water company. You've got your own water company, Seth. Yeah. So do you want to say something uh, about that a little bit and maybe give us a link for people who are interested in that? Yes. Hold on. Wait, my kitty wants to meet everybody here. She just came over. Oh, yeah. We want kitties. Here's Woo! Venus. Hi, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Snooki. She started meowing like really. She does this a lot. So I wanted her to see everybody. Aww. Oh, she's lovely. She, she's a good girl. She's so Is sweet. Is she alive? But... She doesn't move. I know no, she's I'm like kidding. she's just watching. <laughs> she's like, oh. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Fabulous. So can I share something? Oh, go ahead, Steph. Sorry. No, no, go ahead, please. You go ahead. So um I went online and bought this course on water and it had David Walt it had like five experts' opinions about the best water to drink. David Wolf's got this crazy system that's got to run through some copper tubing around in a certain angle at this and that. And four of the five people on there had the most impractical, unworkable things for the average person out there to get good drinking water. And then I found this one guy um, who actually looked up the water. He went to the municipal water site and to see what's in it. He wasn't just selling like a broad stroke system he, he's, he customizes the system for what's actually in your water to be filtered out. So he, so you don't, he doesn't sell you anything that's unnecessary. So he said, he didn't even have to look at my system. I said, I lived in Las Vegas and he says, you guys have the worst water in the country. And uh, I was walking with a scientist hiking one time. And he said, you know, that water in Vegas goes through the human body about six or seven times on average because <laughs> they reconstitute it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um, but he said with Vegas water, and I can, I can kind of apply this to almost everywhere is it's water is so bad, not, not the actual water, but what's in it. You have to strip it down and then build it back up both physically and spiritually. And I thought that that was a really, really good answer. So, you know, at my house, I have an Aquasana filter that does a broad stroke filtering. Then I got a clearly filtered filter that that's kind of like a Brita gravity drop that takes out the fluoride and then that water I pray over and then the, then I follow Abraham's advice where you just you know you get into the vortex get it get in alignment get coherent and then what and then whatever you do you know kind of gets taken up to that level and that's kind of where I I was really racking my brain pulling my hair out like trying to get to the bottom of what do I how do I get good drinking water where I'm at because I don't live near Seth and I don't have access to that incredible spring that, that you have that I, that's worth a trip up there just to experience that spring that you're talking about, bro. And I will, I will one of these days, you know, I'll be knocking on your door. So that's what I just wanted to share. Uh, cause, cause Ben, you could really go around Robin's barn on this water thing. Um, if you don't have a source like, um, like Seth has, then you have your, then, then what are your options? I heard that like, uh, reverse osmosis and distilled water is great at stripping it down, but water is a solvent, a, a soluble. So when you drink it, it I, I, I'm not a scientist, but it says it leaches out the, the, the minerals from your body. So there's a time and a place for 
distilled water if you're doing a certain therapy, but I don't know if you should be drinking it nonstop. And then there's the whole alkaline water thing. And there's a lot of holes in that theory. So at the end of the day, you kind of just get in the ballpark and the rest you do with consciousness is yeah. what I finally arrived at. So there you go. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, I think this is a perfect time to talk about primary water. I don't know if you all have heard of that or know about it, but I feel that it's one of the most important topics of our time regarding water, regarding really anything. And it's something that has been demonstrated to be true through so many different scientific institutions. And I have a friend called Paul Power who has what's called the Primary Water Institute. And he has drilled thousands of these primary water wells around the world. He can drill them on little islands out in the Pacific. And essentially what primary water is this? We have been fed this idea that all the water that exists on the face of this planet is all there is. And that it arrived here exclusively from outer space on comets, asteroids, things of that nature, hitting the earth and then melting or you know, melting as they come into the atmosphere. I mean, I've, I've listened to talks where they're like, yep, the earth formed 4 billion years ago, this many asteroids came into the environment and this much water is what has caused all the oceans of the world to exist. And it's as hard as that is to fathom, a lot of people believe that. But what they have found many years ago, many, many years ago, they started finding evidence of this and they've discovered that it's actually true is that the same magmatic processes that create rare earth minerals. So in lava, in magma, in these internal earth you know, cauldrons that are working and creating new minerals, new elements, water is also created. Because when you think about it, it's really simple. It's just hydrogen and oxygen binding together. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen molecule binding together. So if the earth is creating all these rare earth elements, it certainly seems, makes sense that it would create water. And so they found that it does. And what happens when enough of this water is created, it starts to pressurize and then it seeks outlet. And when it seeks outlet, it goes, it expands and it starts to go up and it looks, it, they found it in this layer of earth called ringwoodite. And they, this, they basically, many places have said it that there is three to four times the amount of water inside of the earth as there is at the top of the earth on the earth's surface. And when we see these underwater vents, when we see, you know, you, like in Peru and different deserts, it's just, there's no hydrologic system where water is being recycled, yet there's an oasis. There's water just coming out of the ground. We, and hence the source of water that I have, Termaline Spring, it's a primary source of water. So we now know that there is water coming up from the ground everywhere, all over the planet, most of it is stuck in a lot of places, but it surfaces into certain areas, okay? But then it gets exposed to other rock and stuff where it takes on the properties of that. So a guy like Paul Power, who is a hydrogeologist, who studies not just water, but geology, knows the type of rock where you drill into and find this water. Now, drilling into the earth doesn't sound like a great thing, but what they've done is they can drill these little tiny holes that are quite non-invasive. And because of his knowledge of geology and hydrogeology, they can find where this water is seeking outlet. They can drill these little holes, and then all of a sudden water's coming out of the ground. They put up a solar panel pump so that people, mostly in Africa, have access to water that they didn't have access to. And he has drilled, I, you know, he's in his 80s now, but him and his team have drilled thousands of these wells around the world. He has presented this to major Middle Eastern governments who, you know, as a solution to the water shortages and the lack of water. And it's just amazing how few world leaders 
want to implement solutions like this, even though science has proven that it's there. And also that they've discovered that it, the potability or the purity, the natural purity of the water is in the upper 90 percentile. So it's pure potable water that's available to everybody everywhere. And, you know, but again, even that, even though it's a viable solution and it's something that can be done, if it's not done with the highest level of consciousness, of integrity, then it just becomes one more thing of an industrialized species making decisions out of harmony with their own inner nature and out of harmony with the outer nature of the world around. We know that doesn't work. We keep getting the same results. So that's why I always keep bringing people back to get in alignment with the natural rhythms of your own body. Make that a priority. Make that a habit. And when you do that, the solutions for every single problem that every single one of us on this globe are facing suddenly just arise up to your conscious awareness as self-evident truths. But it's going to be difficult to arrive at that place where uh, the solutions are there and you just, they're always there. You just couldn't see it because you were just so stuck perceiving reality in this constrictive view. So it's time to open up. It's time to get connected to the unified field of conscious energy within us and around us. And from that place, we're going to be able to generate solutions that help everybody. Oh, thanks, Seth. Yes. Uh, that obviously leads us back to, you know, the acknowledgement of, yes, the planet provides everything, water, electricity, we've got everything in surplus, right? It's mm. just that little system of domination and control that keeps us uh, slightly um, limited. And this is obviously part of the work that we're doing in, in every single Zoom. And every time we have a lovely guest like you, just bring that home again. It is the work of the inner healing and the sovereignty and everything so that we can finally break out of that system. Um, and then, as if by magic, everything will be available to us because it already is, right? <laughs> yeah. So the question is, whilst we're still in it, how can we make the best of it, you know, and, uh, and, and really on an individual basis to acknowledge our potency and to do the work so that we finally can all get together, co-create and out-create that system, right? That, it's that. That's exactly it's, it. It's, it's that. And I want to I wanna, uh, get to, I want to ask uh, Laura here because Laura has, has, a, has a very good understanding with when it comes to the system and, you know, ancestral um, and um, limitations, not just ancestral limitations, but the churches and, and the sacred geometry and, and how we actually use a certain, how the system actually uses to control us and controlling the water. Oh, you, you mean want... like uh, with christenings in fonts and so yeah, on? Yeah, all of that and, and building, yeah. you know, you, you do all these clearings, you know so much about that, you know, whether building the churches on, on, on water sources and on stuff like that. On the geospirals, you want to yeah, say... absolutely. Yeah, I do dousing sets, so um, I'm nowhere near an expert in it, but I, I do enjoy working with the land. And yes, I, I understand that they build the the church spires particularly like Salisbury over vast bodies of water and I think you were saying there is more inner earth water than there is surface water on the earth yeah uh, of course the system has known this and been able to building things like the church spires which create the huge vortex and plate where they place the pulpits because obviously, I mean, people don't realise, but there's a level of fear. I'm not knocking religion, you know, everybody to their own. But there can be, and there has been taught in the past, a level of fear related to going into church. If you sort of, particularly, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, we've been taught to be very God-fearing, haven't we? So there's a certain level of fear that is within a church uh, when one goes in. And then this... The, Combined with the water, the energies of the, the land create this spiral. Seth, I'm sure, knows what I'm talking about, which is energy harvesting. 
and uh, exactly. yeah, I'm sure they've known how to use water for, for hundreds of years. But I never, um, like all of you, I'm sure I never live in fear of, of any of that now, because as we all know from all these conversations, we can overwrite that any time we choose with all the little techniques so many of us know uh, wherever we've learned them, you know, working with crystals, working with the land, with water. I like to work also with the sea. But I had um, a question just tagged on to that, Martina, for Seth, is I've become interested in the different bodies of water having either feminine or, or masculine energies attached to them. So is that something you've come across? In work, working with bodies of water on the land, like a, a spring would feel sort of feminine and soft. Is that something you, you've come across before? Anyone else? I would say yes, but to the degree of a lot of bodies of water, depending on where they are and what they've been affected by, both in recent times and long term, you know, whether they're next to a factory that's dumping tons of chemicals into it, the water, right? Like water is such an emotive thing. It's an emotional substance. So the more water is abused or, you know, not had reverence for and just, you know, whatever, all the different unacknowledged, not cared about, that energy goes into it. You know, and my friend Veda and I did a, a healing for a river and she explained it so beautiful. You know, when she would connect to it, it would feel like there was rage, there was anger. It's, it's, like a river is like a person, but it's a big person and it's had lots of things just dumped into it and crap and all that. And so it holds the energy of rage, of fear, of all that, maybe even more than a polarity because the polarity between masculine and feminine is kind of innate in everything. But look at us as a species. We've been living in a patriarchal, driven society and world for so long that it has caused the species itself to become out of tune with the feminine aspect of nature, of reality. So overall, we're experiencing an imbalance, but it's an imbalance that is like, okay, it's out of balance. What do we do? If we continue to stay in fear, then we're going to continue to reinforce the imbalance but if we choose to be not in fear and not have fear for God, have reverence for whatever this energy form is, to love it, to appreciate it, to realize that it isn't separate from us. You know, and one thing I can say to people, like the time to be martyrs, the time of being afraid for using our voices is over. There are so many of us that are waking up now that realize that we love ourselves, we love each other, we love this world, and we are not afraid to show that anymore. The more we do that, the more we exude and express these higher virtues that are of our soul anyway, and do it fearlessly and bring it out into the earth, then that is what is going to collapse all of these oppressors and controllers and all the things that you know, are coming down on us. But if we don't rise above it, then we're living in the fear of the past and we're adding to the polarization that's already in existence. Oh, Sorry, yeah. that was a long-winded way of, of no, that answering was, it. But. No, that was great. Uh, I mean, the reason I particularly asked about that was because I feel the feminine energy in a lot of the spring side visit. And then when you get wells, they're called like St. Mary's Well and, and things like that. And then I would okay that have been capped off by the patriarchal society to stop the rise of the divine feminine, which is why I particularly associated the feminine, divine feminine energy with springs. And I, I was just wondering whether anybody else had picked up on that at all. Uh, for, for me, what, the water element itself is actually innately feminine because it's the energy of the surrender. It's the flow. It's the going with the flow. It's that openness to receive and to transform itself. 
the water itself for me is that feminine. And I think this is why, you know, I associate the rising of the consciousness uh, and the in intention and attention to water now, because we're obviously talking about the, the rising of the divine feminine, uh, you know, in the masculine, in, in the feminine, you know, and that bringing that balance back that, that was so out of uh, uh, equilibrium for so long. Yeah. Um, you were saying something else before, Seth, you know, uh, the, the consciousness of the water and, and the uh, energies in the water, because it reminded me of when I look at uh, Angelica's uh, pho pho photographs at times, that there hasn't been one single photograph where we couldn't, ha where we didn't see faces. And so many times there are faces that are really crunching it up and, and just not kind faces even you know very demonic faces in those in those in those uh and it's almost like uh we often were saying isn't it angelica it's like you're starting to free them or you bring um attention to them and i, I do remember uh make, doing that uh, water meditation in in that setting in that uh, exhibition setting yeah. and we had people having serious um, physical reactions after that because of we started clearing through the meditation and through the connection of all our water molecules uh, and, and the picture started changing. You could literally see a difference when you looked at the picture first and then afterwards, after the meditation. So really, really fascinating that stuff. Ahead, when sorry. I'm on my sorry, sorry, when I'm on my um, my exploration travels, Martina, because I like to wander, don't I? And I come across small bod bodies of water, and you could almost say a puddle. And I can take a photo, and I might not see the faces. It might be the same for all of us. I can't see the faces straight away. So I'll step back and have a look at the photo and then you can pick up the faces. And then if you haven't already got a feel of the land, which is something I like to do, you can certainly get a feel of where the land is from the faces and where you were saying about some of them look in anguish. So as soon as I see that, I will do a clearing ceremony where I'm at. And that's, that's, a, that's a very nice freeing thing to do. I mean, yeah, I often carry like, as you know, a medicine wheel and things with me to, to work. You work with whatever elements you've got, don't you? You know, we're, we've always got that. We've got wind, we've got the air, you know, we've, we've got the sun, we've got everything with us anyway to work mm. with. And I like doing that. And then taking another photo to see where, how, I don't expect, it's no expect, I don't expect an immediate effect. But sometimes you can see that this has just dissolved. It's just melted away some of the, the anguish that was there. It's, so it's, I work with puddles. <laughs> oh, it's fascinating. And you see, this is in addition to that heart brain coherence, you know, that divine co-creation with water. Work with anything. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it doesn't stop. It start with what's in your cup and work with puddles, work with oceans with with ponds with everything you've got mist work with fog and mist fog and mist are portals to the other world they're Absolutely. the most wonderful things to work with fog and mist isn't it mm. there's more water in the air isn't there yes yeah yes. yeah yes. yeah and all it's... it takes is intention and intention sorry Seth go for it no yeah. no no that's what I was going to say you know what Caroline said there's water everywhere it mm. is not only all in our bodies, around our bodies, in the environment, it's in space. There is literally water everywhere. So by becoming more connected to our own systems, we just naturally become connected to the essence and the nature of what water is. And it's a wild force, you know, a lot of like, it's wild, very wild. And it's something that we can harmonize with but we're foolish if we think we're going to bend it to our will. We can if we're harmonized with it, if we're in alignment with it. But it's like if you think you're going to dam a river forever, it's going to dam you at some point. Because we try to control the environment. We try to block up the environment. It's going to create blockages that eventually are going to bust open and will have to be healed. So, 
Well, yeah. thank you very much, Seth, because that really confirms what I said early on. Water is a woman. <laughs> 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 well, uh, so we've been we've been going for 90 minutes what else you've got Seth here so ask him a few more questions if you have and what I would like to do I've found a little bit of uh you know going back to to Andrew's work I've, I have transcribed something from the water here so I could do this at the end just to read a little type of revocation for the water but use the opportunity having Seth on our on our uh, Zoom today to so have any more questions, go for it. One question. Let me just say I... really quick too, I've got about 10 minutes and then I have to get ready for a session. So yes, let's let's go into whatever anybody wants to and then in about 10 minutes I'll have to go. So, so one more question and then we do the, the it's a very short uh, revocation. Just very quickly, Seth, I wanted to ask you about frozen water and, and in, the, in the state of the water being frozen, is the consciousness frozen? And then when it melts, is that a release of the consciousness which is held and which is frozen? Because we know that the ice caps melting is a cyclical thing on, on the planet, you know, and they are melting again. So I'm just wondering, is that also a release of some consciousness? Would you know, any, would you know about that? Here's, think of the analogy of a tree falling in the woods, right? With no one around, if there's no one around, is there anybody there to hear it fall, right? Mm. Consider that, does, is it even happening, right? Like these are things that can frustrate people when they think about it. And I've even had some people be like, how dare you, you know? But the reality is the more we become conscious of our own internal nature, and really attune ourselves to that, the more conscious we become of external systems that are perplexing to even say the least. So to give an answer to that question can be very difficult because in certain circumstances, it's gonna be yes, in other circumstances, it's not. In quantum physics, they've done experiments with the observer and a lot of people know about this. A lot of things have reported about it between the observer you know, and the onlooker, when you look at something, it appears to be there. But as soon as you take your attention away from it, it disappears into a wave. So the act of perceiving something with human consciousness causes the energy of whatever it is that you're perceiving to come together and form a particle a particle is illusory in its nature because it's made up of atoms, which are 99.9999% energy and information and only 0.001% of, of something physical. So it's almost like nothing is really actually happening that is more important than an internal state that we're being called to become aware of. The more we do become aware of it, the more we realize how powerful we are to not only be aware of these things that are happening throughout the entirety of the world, but to affect them in a profound way. And I saw somebody said, the ice caps are melting. Yes, all these things are happening, absolutely. Yeah. What I'm saying is not bypassing, it's not taking away from the pain and suffering and everything that's happening in the world. It's just calling into question how we respond to it, how we react to it, because most people will react to all of these atrocities that we perceive around us from a fear-based or an angry perspective. Right? Naturally, of course we're gonna do that, but as soon as we do that, and I know this isn't the exact answer that you were looking for, but no, it's okay. we respond to things in this way, we are lighting up the circuits of our own human physiology that are in relation to our past and we keep staying in that place instead of letting it go by focusing on this part of us that is beyond that focusing on the part of ourselves that is beyond the limitations of ourself and committing to that to the degree and trusting it and loving it and like water eroding rock just continue to keep going and going and going until all the things that prevent that natural flow from really being able to flow out into the 
eternity of the sea, you could say, to wear away and wear down. So every quote unquote experiment or co-creation or thing is going to be different depending on the different people who are doing it, right? Mm -hmm. who, are, who are looking at it or doing it. If you have like, say on a small, if you have a bunch of monks doing ice crystals and then taking photographs of them, it's going to be very different than, you know, a bunch of people who are angry and upset and just fear-based. Yes. Yes. Two totally different yes. outcomes. So it's about the perception and projection of those people that are experiencing that. Thank you, Seth. I'm aware that Martina has something she wants to do, and I'm aware you need to go in 10 minutes. So, uh, Thank you. Before, in, in case you have to shoot off, uh, we're going to finish off soon anyway. It's just a tiny one. But in okay. case you have to shoot off early on, Seth, uh, do you want to leave us your um, website where people can get a hold of you? I know you're on yeah, Facebook. Absolutely. Probably, but go for it, Thank yeah. you for that. I'm awake, now what? Is my website. Just I'm awake, now what? You can email me, contact me through that. Um, I wrote a book. I do sessions. I do a lot of different things. And then I have a great group on Facebook called the Water Consciousness Movement, where this is streaming That's live right. you now, yes. where it's mostly about all things water related. Yeah. You know, we get into consciousness and other things, but it's primarily a water-based group. So those are the two best places to find me. Great. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and joining us on the Earth Nivore group. Oh, and uh, yeah, yes. great to have you and your yeah. wisdom. And uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah. So Absolutely. say if you wish you. or not uh, go or go if you have to. It's just going to be a very short one. And I have transcribed that. Or I might even have stolen it from I'm going to listen to it. Anything from Andrew, I'm going to listen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Laura wrote it or he, or, or we transcribed it. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Close your eyes, lovely people. Put your feet onto the ground. Connect to the waters in the inner earth, as we know. It's, there's a lot there. Also connect, as you start, just drop the barriers. Just let go of everything around you for this moment in time. There's no need for protection. And just expand yourself out for a moment. And just connect to that water that you truly be. And from that place of expansion, in your mind's eye, just repeat or listen. I am a photonic being of light, manifesting through sound in the form of my throat chakra, manifesting creation of voice. I have a previous understanding of voice that is not my previous understanding of language. This is my soul's knowingness of heart-based connection, supported by the core strength in my navel. Everything that I cannot say in English or any other language, I can say in this format. I'm an unlimited being of potential. I'm here to do my service to this reality, this place, this body. My service is to give my voice and manifest through flesh, connected to the heart and navel. Connect to all elements of water, fire, earth, and air. Water that is programmable. I share water within all of my heart, my body, my being. So I begin to say to all the, the water molecules in my body, release your polarity, release your pain, release your suffering. Allow love to connect the bonds of water with total ease and joy. Allow the natural energies to flow without obstacles, without toxins, without energetic barriers. And allow there to be a natural psychic filter to let go of all the water that does not belong into my body and allow that all the proper water flows to me. I say to the water in my body that is in the highest crystalline program, we break off all off-world structures that may cause harm to my structure. Anything that is added to my bodily water that is harmonic based, GMO based, chemical based, that alters myself to an acidic nature instead of an alkaline nature, I am removing you from programming of this water. All of that water in my body and related to it is now put on notice of that healing and that changes are sealed in. And so it is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh -huh.
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So just a, a tiny short one to finish off that lovely Zoom. Thanks very much for everyone coming on and sharing your wisdom and your inspirations and asking questions. And the audio is going to go up onto the website, Facebook post, and I hope to see you all next next week, Wednesday, five o'clock. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Seth. Well. That was great. Thank you. Be well. Thanks, Seth. Cheers, Seth. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.